I just want to get involved in this discussion on uh, knowledge and substance, which Professor Anton initiated. And there's a couple of things. I'll be honest with you, this is the third video I've made and I can't get it down to under 10 minutes. I'm going to have to try and do one bit at a time. I mean, what I'll try and do in this one is just talk about what I think, uh, which I think one of, the, one of the key ideas, which is to do with this, what we mean when we say knowledge. And for me, at least, how I'm distinguishing that in my mind from terms like um, data, information, facts, those kind of terms. And I'm not saying I'm right in my definitions, but it, it just it, it helps me to, uh, to to think into this idea a bit more clearly. Certainly when I think about knowledge, I put that term in my mind alongside terms like desire and uh, belief, and maybe evaluative terms like um, like, dislike, those kind of things, want. They're not so much... Uh, terms which indicate something which is very separate from me they're really terms for me at least which are about relationships between myself my my subjectivity and some notional object out there in the world pretty much mapped on actual physical relationships that I have um, so I can give an example of that I've got a cup here and uh, I have a relationship with this cup I have a number of relationships with this cup or I could have I could have a relationship of ownership, so there's me, there's the cup, and then there's a relationship called ownership, um, or owning. I could have, a, a, on a simpler level, I could have kind of perceptual relationship to that cup, so there's me, there's the cup, and then I'm seeing the cup, so there's this relationship of seeing, or a similar relationship of touching, and then there's kind of evaluative relationships, there's me, there's the cup, and this relationship of liking. So all those terms in you know, uh, owning, touching, seeing, liking. These are, for me at least, these are all terms to do with an, uh, a relationship between me as a subject and this notional object out there in space, uh, and they specify my relationship. Now some of those relationships are available to other people. Some other people can see this cup. Some other people can like this cup. Nobody else can own this cup. But they can get into different. But so, so some of those relationships are shared. Some of them are interpersonal. Some of them are going to change, but it makes no difference. Some people might like this cup. Some other people might dislike this cup. So the, um, the, the there's a quite a complex set of relationships between them. But I think knowledge is a bit like that. I think knowledge is is a relational term, um, and the fact that it's uh, conceptual doesn't really change the fact. So again, like belief, like desire, it specifies the relationship between a subject of that knowledge and um, an, a notional object that that knowledge might attach itself to. Now, whether that ultimate knowledge is transcendent or not is, is something I'll come on to. But if, for me, it is about that relationship um, and has a lot of the complexities, potentially, that, um, that, that, are, that I kind of try to illustrate in my relationship with this cup. Um, I might have a... a I might have this thing called knowledge, which specifies my relationship between myself and a notional, conceptual object of that knowledge. Um, but there's all kinds of other relationships that people could get into, which are, uh, might overlap with mine, might be variants of mine, might be completely opposed to mine. Um, and lots of different possibilities are possible. Okay, so that's that's my understanding of knowledge, at least, which, as I say, it's, it's possibly specific to myself, but it's a relational concept. Uh, I think also, like, I think what's, where it gets a little bit confusing, I think, there is because knowledge is a, is a noun, I know, obviously, like desire, like belief, these are nouns, and so there's a kind of thingness about them. They have the, knowledge has this feeling of a thingness. It, it's like an object itself, even though it isn't really. It's, uh, as I say, it's, it's relational. So I think there's something quite complex just about the terminology and just about what the, what knowledge means but I think even though it is even though we do conceive it as a as I say in this kind of noun way it is actually a noun that emerges out of a relationship now it doesn't really address this question of transcendence at all not one bit because it, it simply defers defers the question elsewhere if knowledge is the relationship between a notional subject and a hypothetical or conceptual object, then the question then becomes, what's the status of this object? 
And if I was to reconceive or re rename that object as something like an item of data or a fact or a, a robust theory or a piece of information, you know, and I think for me at least, that those terms feel a bit more distanced than a word like knowledge. I can't conceive of knowledge without somebody knowing it, but I, I kind of can conceive of a fact existing without anybody knowing that fact. Or I can, can kind of conceive of data existing extra personally. Whether it should be or not is a different matter, but I can, easily, I can more easily conceive it in those terms. But as I say, just by um, just redefining knowledge as a, as a relational term doesn't answer the transcendent question. It just defers it to say, well, is, is data uh, transcendent? Are, are theories transcendent? Are, uh, is information transcendent? And that's a much harder question and a fantastically interesting question. Um, because certainly some facts, theories, information, data feels as if it should be. It, feel, it feels like it makes sense to say that 2 plus 2 equal 4, have always equal 4, in any and all possible universes would equal 4, preceded human ability to count. You know, it, it, it seems to make perfect sense to say that 2 plus 2 equals 4 is a transcendent um, as a piece of transcendent data, a piece of information, which doesn't require anybody to know it, it just is. Um, in the same way that my cup doesn't require anybody to perceive it, not if it to be, apparently. Um, but then other, other kinds of facts don't. You know, social facts aren't like that. I mean, some kind of social or synthetic facts like um, all unmarried men are bachelors. I think that's a synthetic fact. I mean... Yes, that's a piece of information, but what does it does it make sense to say that's always been a fact since the beginning of the universe? You know, however many billions of years ago when the planets were just starting to co condense out of the dust of exploding stars, was there this kind of fact floating around to do with whether unmarried men were bachelors or not? Um, or uh, we have a whole host of... Yeah, facts that emerge out of softer sciences. You know, did it make sense to say that the human, uh, the psychoanalytic sense, does it, did it make sense to say that the human mind was composed of a, an id, an ego, a superego? Did it make sense to say that two million years ago? I don't think it did. I'm not sure it makes sense now, actually. But, you know, did it make, was there a kind of fact out there waiting to be discovered prior to human arrival on the planet. So I think, there's a, there's a, there's a, I think we need to complexify what we're understanding of as these objects of knowledge, this data, this information, these facts, these theories, and get more complex about those, because some of those we're conceiving of in very different ways, some of which do take on this character of, of something transcendent, like 2 plus 2 equals 4, atomic weight of mercury, boiling point of water at sea level, whatever. Um, but some of which don't. So even though our relationships of knowing can be the same, the objects of knowing do seem to be very different and some lend themselves to a more kind of transcendent claim than others. And some just look ludicrous when you look at them in those terms. Okay, something else I want to talk about, but I'll, I'll try that in the next video.